praise your name and give you worship, O God. Father, we've come here, Lord, not in vain, but to worship you in spirit and in truth, O God. Father, we know, Lord Jesus, that you've called us for this hour, this time, and this season, Lord Jesus. And Father, Lord, even as worship is scarce on the earth, O God, Father, you're longing for us to open up our mouths and worship you, O God. Father, you, Lord, have revealed truth to us, O God. And how joyful we are in our hearts, O God, and rejoicing night and day, Father. Lord, uh, rejoicing around the revealed word of the hour, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, Father, that every day, Lord, our faith is being built up, O God, into that most holy faith, O God. And Lord, until, Lord, we develop that faith, Lord, to change the atoms in our very own body, Father, to change dimensions, O God. Father, I pray, Lord, you'll keep us in readiness of the hour. Help us, Lord, not to be distracted, Father. But I pray, Lord, we'll be focused on your goal and your purpose, O God, and what you're wanting to achieve through your body in this time, O God. We pray, Lord, for everyone that is coming to the house of the Lord. I pray you'll bless them. Lord, meet with them at the point of need, O God. I pray you'll speak to us through your precious word. And may your name be glorified. We ask these blessings now with much thanksgiving. Amen. 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 I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Amen. Come into the house of the Lord to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Greet your brother yes. and your sister. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, our sister Vanessa, happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Every day we are getting younger and younger and younger. Yes. Amen. We are moving towards our new body. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I know sometimes the, it seems like the old people feel young, but the young people feel old. Amen. No life, oh, no energy. You, amen. Thank Praise you, the Lord. Yes. Amen. So, amen. Pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, Sister Vanessa. Amen. As you continue to serve Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You enjoyed that song? Amen. Amen. We appreciate the song. Amen. Hallelujah. In your most weakest time, when there's no other hope, you've got nobody else to turn to, Jesus is available. Amen. Amen. Jesus was on earth at that time, and the woman knew that she could get to Jesus. Amen. If she could just touch the M of His garment. Amen. So praise the Lord. We'll turn to our scripture reading this morning. Amen. Let's start reading in Habakkuk. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2. And verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables amen, amen? is everybody in here yet amen. amen i don't want anyone to miss the message so whoever needs to come into the service please come in amen <clears throat> we come to church we must be in the church amen, amen? we don't have an overflow here amen hallelujah the only overflow is for the mothers and the children praise the lord what does the Bible say? And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. So it mustn't be written in a mysterious form. It must be written in simple language so the one that's reading it can run with the vision. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Amen. Amen? Yes. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. Amen. Yes. It will not tarry. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So notice the emphasis there. On those words, amen. Praise the Lord. And then our main portion of scripture we're going to read is John 8 31. Amen. Praise the Lord. John 8 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set 
you free. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord had blessings to the reading of His Word. You can leave that scripture up there. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go back to that verse uh, 31. Amen. I'd like to speak on continue in patience. Amen. Continue in patience. To see the promise come to pass. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed on him. So this message is coming just to believers. Don't miss the details of this verse now. Jesus is talking to believers. Amen. He's not talking to the scribes and the Pharisees and everybody else. Yes. Jesus talking to the Jews who believed on him. Amen. And he's telling them, if you continue in my, in my what? In my word, Amen. then I hear my disciples indeed. Amen. Amen. So we got to ask ourselves, are we continuing in the word? Amen. When we are facing, how are we? Let me ask you a question like this. How are you facing your daily trials, your battles, your situations in life? How are you overcoming it? Amen. Amen? How are you overcoming your trials? How are you navigating through your stress and all of these things that come upon us? Amen? The key is the word of God. Amen. And Jesus is telling those that believe on him. Are, are we the ones that believe on Jesus? Amen. He says, if you continue in my word. Amen. Meaning you must have patience oh, yeah. to continue. Amen. Continue in my word. Amen. Then are he my disciples. What is a disciple? A follower of Christ. Amen. The one that wants to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. Amen. Another word is a devotee. A one who is devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you continue in my word. Oh, yes. Notice he's not saying if you just come to church. Mm. Amen. He's not saying if you only do a particular thing. His instruction is specific. If you continue in my word. Mm. Then I hear my disciples indeed. So how is our study of scripture? Is it just casual? Is it just like. Uh, whatever verse pops up today, I will read that. Or is our study of the word intentional? Because the word can liberate us from every situation. Yes. Amen. The word is key and it's the answer to all our problems. Amen. Amen. Amen? Now we just read Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. It's telling you, though it tarry, wait for it. Amen. It must come to pass. Now, we can't be wavering in our faith. Yes. We must be consistent in our faith. Mm. Where is it we were speaking about having a Rottweiler faith? Mm. A Rottweiler, when it locks its jaw, you can't open it. You can hit it on its head or do anything. Once it grips, it will not release. Yeah. It will not open up its mouth. Let your faith be like that. Yeah. Amen. Don't be despondent when you see things not coming to pass. Amen? When you see things not working out according to your timeline. God wants to work. Amen? Faith worketh patience. Amen. Amen. God is testing if you really believe Him or you just want to see the reward of what you want. Or I'll continue in the Word until I get my healing and then I'll forget about the Word. I'll continue in the Word until I get the desire of my heart. Then I'll forget about the Word. You know it's human nature that way. We start something for a while and then we back off. Today we wake up, hey, right, I'm ready to lose weight. I got my exercise program, I got my diet program. Give it a week, give it two weeks, give it three weeks, and then what happens? We forget about it. Then we go on back to the old slum. Amen? But if you continue, say you were continuing and you had a goal that you were going to lose a certain amount of weight. If you had continued in patience, and apply the diet and apply the exercise program would you see the results so if we can apply these things in the natural if somebody is studying something maybe the degree is three or four years if they continue in patience 
if they continue and, and, and dedicate themselves to study, will they see the result at the end of the four years? They will certainly see the result. So if in the natural, we can be persistent to achieve natural things, how much more should we in the spiritual be persistent to achieve spiritual things? Sometimes I feel like we are more committed to physical things and we put so much of time and effort and energy into physical things, amen, and what we want to achieve physically and less spiritually. Amen. So sometimes you've got to ask yourself, what is the matter with man? Why is he so casual when it comes to serving God? Amen. Hallelujah. John 17, 17 says this. If you want to know what is truth now, because Jesus had told him, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. In John 17, 17, Jesus is telling them, sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. Amen. So if you're going to continue in the word, like what Jesus is saying, he means you must continue in truth. Now a truth can be a partial truth for a certain amount of time, but then when God is moving on to further the truth, you got to move with truth. Luther's light was truth. But there was a continuation. We can't say we are remaining in truth with Luther's light. We needed to progress to Wesley's light, sanctification. Then we needed to progress to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And now we are coming into the formed word image of the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Now the word is coming to full fruition in our lives. Yes. Amen. You say, what are you talking about? Simplify it for me. When I see you, when I see my brother and when I see my sister, I must see Jesus on display. Amen. I must see the life of Jesus on display. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Why was that possible? Because all that was in God, he poured into Christ. Yes. The end. No. Yes. So if Jesus thought it not robbery <laughs> to be equal with God, because all that was in God, he poured into Christ. Amen. Now all that was in Christ, he poured into the church. Yes. Now can you come into your position and say, you thought it not robbery to be equal with Christ. Amen. We are heirs of the Father. Yes. Joint heirs with the Son. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's go to Hebrews 6 and 12. We'll lay these scriptures. Amen. And then we'll continue in our sermon. Hebrews 6 and 12 says, That you be not slothful. Amen. Don't be slothful when it comes to the things of God. But followers of them. Who through faith... And patience, what they do? Yes. Through faith and what? Patience. patience. Yeah, but I gave the Lord a timeline. I told him, it's got to be now. Eh? Amen. Amen. God is not serving us in our kingdom. We are serving God in his kingdom. Amen. And the reason why he's got you in this holding period of maybe 25 years maybe 120 years in this way 430 years in this waiting period is for what because he wrote the vision and according to his word you see malachi chapter 4 verse 5 and 6 behold i sent you elijah the prophet was laying in scripture the vision was written but until the appointed time we are to wait for it yes it couldn't have been in 1900 1901 1902, no. But in 1906 yes. Amen. was the fulfillment of that vision. Amen. 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 God had to have a man on the earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we through faith and patience inherit the promise. Amen. Why I'm telling you that? Amen. Because you have worked your faith up to a level where you can believe God for all things to be possible. Yes. But then you don't have the patience to wait. And then what happens? When the person is not in patience, his faith wavers and he loses out on the promise of God. Yes. Abacook 2 says, though we tarry, wait for it. Yes. Amen. The beginning of the year, we ask so many of you to write things down. Amen. Some of you may have written. Amen. Amen. Some of you may have written it on your mind. Amen. And that's where it will remain. 
Hallelujah. Because God had thoughts, and as long as it remained thoughts, nothing happened on the earth. God had to take the thoughts and speak it. Amen. That's the law on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Now James 1, 2, and 3 says this. My brethren, count it all joy. Now you say, but I'm going through a trial. I'm going through patience. I'm going through sickness. I'm going through tribulation. You're saying I must count it all joy. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Amen. Because when faith is built up to a level, you can get excited in the service. You can say, okay, I'm speaking, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. You spoke the word. It went forth. But remember, the word will not return void. It's going to come back to you. How is it coming back? In multiplication. We are in the kingdom of God and we serve God by multiplication. So the, king, the word is coming back, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So the trying of your faith worketh patience. I don't like patience. People don't like patience. You know why we live in a society where everything is instant. Everything is instant. Amen. You know, back in the day, you could tell somebody, you know what? We need to buy this and we're going to save towards it. Now that takes patience. Now people don't want to wait and save. What they do? Quick fix. They go take a loan that they can't pay and they put themselves in debt. Amen? Mm. Hallelujah. Wednesday we were speaking about Elisha, the one who can erase all debts. Amen? If you missed the sermon, too bad. Those of you that were here, you know what I'm talking about. Amen? Hallelujah. You know how to handle your problems. You know how to speak about it. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I don't preach things for a sermon. So I don't expect you to continue paying that thing over the next 20, 30 years. Elisha, the eraser of bondsmen, is here. Amen? Hallelujah. So you need to confess that with your mouth. And how was he doing it? The Lord is giving him wisdom through his hands. Amen. So the Lord is going to bless you and multiply you in order for you to get out of that. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What is joy? The Bible says they go to the first verse there. Verse 2. Count it all joy. How many of you know what joy is? What is joy? Be happy. Joy. Don't say your auntie. <laughs> what is joy? Joy of the Lord is my strength. Anybody else know what joy is? Some of you don't know what joy is. Say the last time I felt joy is when I was born. Anybody know what joy is? What is the true meaning of joy? Amen. How can we be joyful? The true meaning of joy is knowing the end result. Mm. If you know the end result, you can be joyful. Amen. Did God reveal to us the end result yes. of Amen. our lives, yes. of our journey on the earth? Amen. Amen. So that is the true meaning of joy, is knowing the end result. Amen. You will find it here in Hebrews 12 verse 2. Amen. Look at the one who is the beginner and who is the finisher. The one who authored your life. Let me speak to every one of you here. You are not here on the earth by chance. Right. You didn't come out of here by what they call it. These are unbelievers. What did they say? How, how creation started? Hey. Evolution. Evolution. They believe evolution. You know when you're going to uh, realize evolution is wrong? When you end up in hell. You're going to evolve to hell. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our what? I thought that it was my faith. I thought it's my faith. Who authored your faith? Is the author and is the finisher. 
So the one who started a good work in you is able to finish it. Amen. Amen. But can you continue in the word in patience? Amen. 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 We don't, we are, we are running a race and we don't have much time because we must run with all the strength that we have. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We must finish strong. Yes. We are at the finish line. Amen. I don't know if you're hearing me. I'm telling you we're at the finish line for the ending of the Gentile dispensation. But the one who altered our faith is the one that's here to see us through, to finish it. Amen. Who for the joy, see now, joy is knowing the end result. The joy that was set before him. He knew that if he goes through the cross, he'll receive us as trophies. So that's the joy, knowing the end result. The joy that he set before him endured the cross. For Brother Ramesh who was set before Jesus endured the cross. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Jaden was set before Jesus. So Jesus endured the cross so that he can experience the joy of Amen. fellowship Amen. and restoration with you. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We ought to be excited about our salvation. Yes. Amen. We ought to be excited that Jesus Christ came and died for us. Amen. Yes. And restored us back to our original condition. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. We've got to have some joy about it. Amen. 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 We can't have an attitude oh Jesus that we are so what? Amen. Every day we ought to be rejoicing. I thank you, Lord, that you saved me, O oh God. I thank you, Lord, that by your grace I am saved, O oh God. I thank you for the faith, O oh God, which you authored in my life, O oh God. I know, Father God, that I must continue in faith, O oh God. And you will start this faith in me. You will author this faith in me. You will finish the faith in me, O oh God. I'm not wavering. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You know what you're going to get if you keep relying on your own strength? You know when your strength is gone? You're going to be a miserable old person without salvation. Without Jesus Christ. You say, how do I know if I'm saved? Do you ever have thoughts of Jesus? you ever have thoughts of His Word? I'm rejoicing night and day As I walk this narrow way you know what the school of the prophets told uh, Elisha? Uh, this way is too narrow. <laughs> this place that you're going is too straight. Yes. So we want to go build another place. Mm. They can't walk with you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? Don't end up a miserable person. Right. Have the joy of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Have the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. And I want you to be able to speak that in the life of your partner, yes. in the life of your children, yes. if they are miserable, yes. amen, depressed people. Yes. Amen. Say, I thank you, Lord, that my husband is joyful. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that my wife is joyful. I thank you, Lord, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. If amen. you can have faith for healing, you can have faith for all things. Amen. Thank you. You don't have to live with this person that you call a neck bag. You can change it with your words. You can change it by the life you are living. Amen. You can speak what you want. I thank you, Lord, that my, my wife is not negative. I thank you, Lord, that my child is not negative. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that my husband is not negative. Yes. I thank you, Lord, Father, that he's a man full of faith. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that you altered the faith in him. Amen. I find it hard to believe, brother. How you can say I must speak like that? Well, continue in your problem then. You have, your words can get you out of your problem. Yes. Because you are not speaking your own word. You are speaking the word of God. Amen. Heavens and earth will pass away. But my word Amen. will never pass away. Oh, my word is truth. If you continue in patience, you, you shall see the result. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Some people are thinking this is a lucky charm here. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll just serve the Lord for all the blessings. Amen. 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 I want the giver of the blessings. Hallelujah. I want the, the Holy Ghost, the person of the Holy yes. Ghost himself. Amen. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Praise the Lord. How I many of you feel that way? Oh, yes, Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be rejoicing night and day and live your miserable way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, all I care about is my, you know, as long as I got my jeans and my tackies, I'm happy. 
As long as I have my cell phone, as long as I got my laptop, these things give me cheap thrills. You're looking for a blesser. You know who looks for blessers? These fast women. They are looking for all the men who got money who can bless them. They call them blessers. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, it's more important for you to bless Jesus yes. than for him to bless you. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee. Lord, why must I bless you? You're so blessed. I will bless thee, O Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You know you're asking God the wrong way. If you read Ephesians, the Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. You go in there and saying, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me, Lord. You know what you are saying? I don't know who I am. No. That's why your prayers are not answered. Yes. You are going before God and because you are praying in ignorance, yes. you are praying, bless me Lord, bless me Lord, bless me Lord. The Lord says, I can only bless you if you know who you are and what the yes. word says about you. Yes. So you approach God and say, I thank you Lord that I'm yes. already blessed. Yes. I thank you Lord that all my needs are met. Oh, yes. I thank you Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't it? You see, we need to change our ways, change our thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The way out of your problem is not you going to your brother, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. You feel spiritual when you tell everyone, pray for me. Eh? When you say, pray for me, pray for me. When Brother Brandon was dealing with Billy Paul, what did he tell him? I didn't do the sinning, you did the sinning. Amen. Who must pray? You pray. Ah, but you think you'll know me? Last I spoke to him is when I nearly fall down and I said, Jesus. <laughs> hey? Last I spoke to him was when that dog was chasing me and I said, Oh, your God. That's the last time I spoke to Jesus. Amen? And this is not just for the old people, young people, children. Do you pray? Yes. Or are you shy? Amen? You should not be shy for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Children ought to be on fire for God. Young people ought to be on fire for God. Amen. 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 We ought to be able to say hallelujah. Amen. We ought to be able to say praise the Lord because of what he has done for me. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, we are people who walk by faith. I mean, if you can agree with that. Amen. Amen. So, the safest place that you and I can walk right now is to walk according to the purpose of God. Amen. Amen. Nothing can touch you if you are fulfilling God's purpose. Yes. Amen. So, we must be focused on His purpose. Amen. Amen. Driven by His purpose. Our whole life must be centered around Christ and what He wants to do through us with His word. Christ-centered lives. Remember to sing the song later. Jesus at the center. When we're closing, right? Remember, if I forget. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus in the far right of it all. I'll push you to the left when I have all that I need. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I know nobody's Nobody is living that way here. All of us live Christ-centered lives. Amen. All of us are totally dedicated to the word. All of us are committed to the study of the word. So this is going to the internet people. Amen. Amen. So just bear with me. Amen. Amen. Just bear with me because give yourself a nice tap there. See, Brother Sam is doing it too. I say, well done, boy, for conforming to everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We must live Christ-centered lives. Amen. Amen. So, we find here, this is what I'm trying to get to you. God asked Noah to build an ark and to preach repentance before the destruction of the earth was going to come by what? Water. Amen. And even though he had never seen rain before, year after year, amen, there was no rain. He built the ark and still there was no rain. God didn't tell him when it was going to rain. He never set any time limit. He just said it's going to rain. So what did Noah have to do? Continue in the word. Amen. By faith, through patience. Yes. Noah had to continue in the word. Noah had to stay focused and faithful to the purpose for which God had called him. 
Amen. No one knew that he was going to see it in his generation. Amen. Hallelujah. And Noah was ready to go into the ark. Anytime God said go into the ark. How are we living our lives? Amen. And after 120 years, it rained. Amen. Can we remain patient? Amen. Can we wait for the promise to be fulfilled? Amen. 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 Some of us need to develop patience. You tell your mother you're hungry. The mo your mother tells you the food will be ready in one hour. You say, you want me to die? I'm starving. <laughs> no patience. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes, this is now fictional. This is fictional what I'm telling you. The wife will tell you, do this. This is a fiction story, right? And you don't do it immediately. Leave it, I'll do it myself. This is a fictional story. I forgot the name of the book, but <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about. Or the other way, wife, husband will say, make my tea. Where years I spent in van. <laughs> Amen. What happened? We need to continue in patience. Amen. Amen. So, we've got to remain patient and wait for the promise to be fulfilled. Now when the tea don't come, in an hour's time, are you going to blow your top off? Even when they bring the tea, now you're sulking. <laughs> hey, when I asked you for the tea, now you're bringing the tea. I was busy changing the baby's nappies. Now, Amen. So we must remain, I'm, I'm trying to get through this here. Hear what the prophet says? We got to wait patient, right? In this first quote here in the trial, 107. He says, he never said, as soon as you lay hands on the sick, they're going to jump up and run around the floor like the skeptic wants to make you think. He said, they shall recover. He never said when, they will. He said, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. In James 5, for verse 14, God shall raise him up. When? He didn't say. He just said he would. Amen. 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 Yeah, in 109, he says, Mark 16, he said, so the prophet is really one quoting Mark 11, 23. How do we know it? We should know the scripture of heart, right? But he's saying, he said, say to this mountain, be moved and don't doubt in your heart, but believe what you have said she will come to pass. He didn't say when, he said it would. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So what you need to do when you speak that word and you speak to the mountain, you need to go rejoicing. You need to have joy because you know the end result. What's the end result? The mountain has moved. Amen. So I'm rejoicing night and day. Amen. Amen. Thanking God. Thanking God. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. 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 I was once blind and now see. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You get people who are skeptics, tell you, let me see you make this man walk. Amen. He's been in a wheelchair a long time. Amen. He said he's got faith. You see, the prophet says, that's the devil. Skeptic coming. Jesus never said, amen. They jump up right away. He says, amen. That's what people want an instant. Amen. He said, amen. If they believe, they would get well. They shall recover. Amen. It depends what prayer you're praying. If you're applying Mark 16, you will see Mark 16 results. If you're applying Mark 11.23, you'll see Mark 11.23 results. If you're applying Mark 9.23, you'll see Mark 9.23 results. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what happens? We've been explaining to this to you through the months. There's spiritual warfare going on. Yes. And Rafa can't always get to you. If you, if you only knew the angelic world and how it operates. Amen? Because sometimes, you know God is omnipresent. Amen? But He can only be at one place at one time. And how, does he, how is He omnipresent? Through His omniscience. Because He knows all things. Amen? Hallelujah. But God is a physical being. He can be at one place at one time. 
Amen. Hallelujah. So say, for, now, for example, if now you are sitting here and you are afraid to believe God for something right now. Yes. You're saying, Lord, I believe you. I receive it right Amen. now. I receive it. Amen. Now he's going to connect with your faith. But maybe, Jireh, what I'm saying, there are seven compound names. He's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom. There are so many people, amen, that are praying to God. Amen. And God sends his angels as ministering spirits. Mm, right. Now you can receive this or not. Yes. Amen. But that's how the angel of the Lord came into the prophet's meeting. Amen. So the angel, why, would he, why couldn't he just pray before the angel came? Why would he say, you know, I'm waiting for somebody? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What am I trying to tell you? Why didn't Daniel receive his promise immediately? There was a spiritual warfare going on. These angels are caught up in warfare. And the prayer sometimes may not be answered immediately. Yes. But maybe they'll come the next day or two. Yes. Yes. And they're coming to see if you are still continuing in faith. Oh, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Continuing in patience. Mm. Continuing in the what? W-O-R-D. Yes. Continuing in the word. Oh, Amen. Amen. Imagine when the angel comes. Two days later, and there you're busy with your own thing. Gone back to your old ways. Your faith was only between 10 and 12 on a Sunday morning. 5 past 12, you say, goodbye faith. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye patience. You'll see 5 past 12. On the way home, you'll see how many people have been patient or not. Eh? You didn't even press the push button there, put the air on. You didn't even start the car yet. Now you're following speed distance. I mean, they're saying they're hungry. Patience. Continue in patience. Why I'm saying these things, you can't suddenly have patience in one aspect of your life and be impatient the rest of your aspects. Patience is a thing that's developed. Yeah. Amen. Last week we were talking about character. The prophet says the only thing you will take to heaven is your character. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And we were showing you how the word is molding your character. So if the word which is an eternal word molds your character into the image of Christ, then your character which is able to live on this earth is the same character that can live in that earth. Amen. In that heaven. Yes. Amen. That's why you don't change your character. But you must come into the character of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, amen. You think of Abraham. We've been through Noah. You think of Abraham. God told him he was going to have a son through his wife, Sarah. She was 65 at that time. Abraham was 75. They had no sign of children. Or whom was dead. Amen. After 28 days came, nothing happened to Sarah. They laughed and made fun of Abraham. Amen. The first year came, they laughed and made fun of him. They asked him, how many children you got now? You told us the Lord told you you're going to have a son. How many children you got now? But the Bible says, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. Amen. But was strong in faith. Amen. Now, remember from 75 to 100, was his body getting weaker or stronger? Come on now, physically. Was his body getting weaker or stronger? His body was getting strong, uh, weaker, but what was getting stronger? His faith was getting stronger. Amen. So year after year, his faith grew stronger all the time because he believed that God was able to keep his word and he was focused on God's purpose. So one day, amen, hallelujah, while he's sitting there and he's maybe talking to Sarah because she's in the tent behind him, the angel of the Lord comes to him. Amen. 25 years passed. He's old. He's stoop shouldered. Sarah could hardly get around herself. Amen. Sarah was 90 years old. But as soon as they met the angel of the Lord, the prophet of God says, the very next day, his shoulders started to straighten out. Amen. He no longer was walking as an unchecked man. His shoulders started to straighten out. Amen. The Bible says, the prophet tells us that his air started to go back to black. You can see I'm having a body change slowly. Amen. 
Amen. Sarah's cheeks became red. Sarah started to look young again. Beautiful again. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And they started to turn back to a young man and woman again. Amen. Now the prophet says that God hides his messages in between the lines. Because you can't go to a seminary school to learn that Abraham and Sarah turned back young again. It's only this prophet that told us that. Right. So hear what he says. He says, my wife, this is now in, amen, in the paragraph there, 120. My wife, when she writes me a letter, I can read between the lines. I know what she's talking about because I love her. I know her nature. I know what she means. She's writing, I'm sitting here tonight, Billy. The children are in bed. I'm thinking of you. I know what she is meaning because I love her. You see, then he says, if you are in love with God and God's spirit is in you, the Holy Spirit himself is the interpreter of this word. Amen. Amen. So he's laying this now to show us the hidden mystery between this. So he says, in order to get that baby, a womb was dead, a live stream was dead, he would have to make a mother, another womb. Yes. He gave Sarah another whom. Amen. What would he have to do? You see, they didn't have any bottles they stick in the baby's mouth so the mother can run around everywhere. Them days, it had to be a wet mother, meaning a breastfeeding mother, right? So in order to do that, the milk veins was dried up so he would have to make new milk veins. Yes. To feed the baby. And another thing, a woman 100 years old going into labor, what do you have to give her? He would have to give her a new heart. Oh, yes, God. Amen. Amen. See, he didn't just patch it up. Hallelujah. Our God don't believe in patch jobs. Yes. Amen. When he heals, he really heals. Amen. Amen. Ask Brother Joshua. When he heals, he really heals. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, but after 25 years, the baby came in on the scene. It happened. God didn't say you're going to have the baby next week by Sarah. He never designated any time. Amen. He said he would have a baby by Sarah. He never said when. He just said he would. He showed in him what he's going to do to all Abraham's seed. They'll turn back anew. Get a new body for to receive that coming son that we're looking for. I still believe the promise. You say that's radical. Said he didn't say when he would do it, but he said he would do it. Amen. So God did not say when he would answer you. He wants you to believe the answer is on the way. Now sometimes can, God can use cruel situations to bring his purpose to pass. God can take you to trials to bring his purpose to pass. Amen. Look at what happened to Joseph. Like we all know what the end result is, right? That's our joy that we are going to be seated with Jesus on his throne. Because we are overcomers of this day. I don't know about you, but I already overcame this age. Amen. 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 Now Joseph, why was his faith not wavering? Why did he continue in patience? Because he believed the dream. The dream saw him that his father and his brothers were bowing down before him. Yes. So when he was in the pit and he didn't see his father and brothers bowing down before him, he continued in patience, mm, yes. continued having faith because he knew the dream must come to pass. Amen. Amen. Then they took him and put him in part of his house and he was a servant there. Amen. He became his servant. So from a slave, he became his servant. But even in that situation, his father and brothers did not bow to him in part of his house. So he knew there was a further work and he was working in God's purpose. So he continued in faith. Yeah. They threw him in prison. But he knew that his father and his brothers did not bow to him there in prison. So he knew the vision was yet for an appointed time. Amen. So he had to wait for it. So he continued in patience. I got a point why I'm telling you all of this. It's only when he was taken to the highest level of the king's palace that his father and his brothers came to him. Then he knew he could say, this day, this dream, 
is fulfilled. You see, some of us are wavering in faith. Some of us are wavering in our journey. But I'm asking you, have you received a new body yet? Then why are you wavering? That's the end result. We need to continue. We're going to have a new body. We're going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Stop living like you've already achieved it. This is not the millennium. This is not, amen, the restoration of all things where Christ has now restored Eden on the earth. Come on now. Amen. We must continue in faith. We must strive if we want to attain. Amen. So God can use cruel, take us through cruel trials, cruel testing. You wonder why these things have to happen. The Bible says in Daniel 2, 21, he changes the times and seasons. He removed kings and he set it up kings. So God is in control. Amen. Who's changing times and seasons of your life? God. Amen. You, you put up these scriptures as I'm calling them out. Daniel 2, 21. He changed the times and seasons. He removed kings and set it up kings. Amen. This is God's plan. Yes. This is God's program. In Revelation 4, 11, Jesus is telling us, Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, they are worshipping Jesus. They are worshipping God, sorry. And they are saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. Are you created by God? Yes. Then you are here serving His purpose. Amen. You are here for His pleasure. Amen. Amen. Romans 8.28 it says, and we know that these things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen? amen. We find here, amen, why God is using now a cruel thing that's happening in Egypt. These people are successful people. They are able to build the bricks and give Pharaoh what he wants. But Pharaoh is not happy because his people are increasing rapidly. Amen? We've gone into Moses now. But there was a family that was waiting for the promise because they were following the word of God. They were continuing in the word. The prophecy went out, you all shall be in Egypt for 400 years. So they knew that 400 years had passed. Hello? Yes. So they were continuing in the word is what I'm trying to tell you. And they knew the scriptural sign and evidence that they were looking to see. So the, the prophet will dramatize this. You can read it in uh, a teaching on Moses. I think the message is called Teaching on Moses, where the prophet is bringing this out. And he says, amen, that Amram got to praying. Amram and Joseph bit, amen, or Yochabit, if you want to pronounce it like a Hebrew, saw that it was time for the word to be fulfilled. So they went to praying. And the prophet says, it's usually those who pray is the one who got the burden. Amen. That's in a true sign that's overlooked. Amen. And it's usually, you'll find it there on the notes. And it's usually those who pray is the one who's got the burden. Mm. Who's got the burden? The one who is praying. Amen. Amen. It's usually those who pray is the one who's got the burden. The one who gets something. It's those who pray that's ordained of God to do so. Mm. Mm. You see? God has called you, separated yourself from the things of the world. And the glorious power of God has sanctified you from them things. You should be the happiest person there is in the world. Look to your neighbor and tell him I'm so happy that you are happy. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not talking? Tell him he wants to hear. Tell him I am so happy that you are so happy. Say it's okay to look at me. Amen. You should be the happiest person in the world. How many of you from today will say I will be the happiest person in the world? Amen. Husbands, look at your wives. I don't know why Brother Jeff is laughing. He wants to get in problems there. <laughs> you should be the happiest person in the world. There was millions that would do it if they could, but they can't. It's not for them to have it. Are you listening to the prophet? 
Yes. Happiness is reserved for you. Oh, thank you. Amen. This is the day when the church is called out, separated. Yeah, little boys and girls, what the prophet is saying to you now. He says, little boys and girls, does God hear prayer? Our oh, little girls here, does God hear prayer? What do you say? Does God hear prayer? See, in the church there, the boys and girls said yes. He hears prayer. Does God answer prayer? God can hear it, but does he answer? Okay. Sometimes he makes us wait. Is that right? But God answers prayer, doesn't he? Amen. Amen. And just because everything is going wrong, that's no sign we should quit praying. You remember what the word says, now continue in the word, then you shall be my disciples. What does the word teach us? The word teaches us how to pray. We just pray on anyhow, don't we? God answers prayer. Let's say it all together. Let's all say it together now. The prophet is saying it there. Let's say it all together. God answers prayer. Amen. Yes, no matter what the circumstances are, he answers anyhow. So then that night, I'm, here's Amram now. I'm going up to pray like I never prayed before. There's no, there's, that's the way to pray. Pray like you never prayed before. Really get to business. Amen. If you just go up and say, Lord, bless so and so, God don't take interest much to that. Amen. So you see now, you learn a key here now. If I ask you, Brother Ramesh, pray, the, pray for me and the Lord will bless me. If you go and say, Lord, bless Brother Adrian, what is he saying? If I go up and say, Lord, bless so and so, God don't take the interest much to that. Eh? Hey? But when you really get down to business, when your little boys and girls pray, get down to business. You know what I'm talking about? You know how you get down to business when you're on that phone. When you're chatting to your friends, you get down to business. You must get down to business with praying. Do you do that in school? Do you ask God to help you in school? When you're going to go to school and don't make very good grades, like some of you know, after the test, you're praying night and day. <laughs> Amen. God, I want you to help me. Have a little place. Slip out and pray. Say your little prayer. You say it every night before you go to bed, when you get up in the morning. So the prophet of God tells us that the angel of the Lord came to Amram and he told him, Amen, that the Lord has heard your prayer. And I've come to tell you that he's going to send you a deliverer. And he's remembered his promise. And the angel points his sword to the north and he tells him, you're going to have a son. Amen. Because we know how the angel of the Lord talks, right? You're going to have a son. Amen. And he shall be the deliverer. Amen. Hallelujah. About this time next year, you're going to have a son. So Amram comes down. I'm going to close now. Amram comes down running to Joseph Beth to tell him, we're going to have a son. We're going to have a son. But Joseph Beth is not too happy about the news because the law had just been passed that they're going to kill all babies. But God is not concerned about the law. If he's got a purpose to fulfill, amen, he will bypass all laws. Amen. Yes. Come on now. Yes. God will protect you from all the laws. Yes. Amen. No matter what the laws are passed, God will protect you if you're working according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. So look at the time and the, the timing of God to bring Moses to pass is when they're passing the laws about the deliverer. About, sorry, killing babies two years and under. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, God will bring it to pass. Amen. We just be joyful and remain true to the promise and bring forth this baby. Amen. Hallelujah. If God promised your baby, if God promised you a healing, if God promised you that he's Jehovah Jireh, amen, God will bring it to pass in your life. Amen. It's God's problem, amen, to take care of it. Amen. You apply the word by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, you can't bankrupt heaven. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't bankrupt heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to live in God's economy. Stop living off our own economy. Let's live in God's economy. We cannot bankrupt heaven. God will not go broke based on your faith. 
Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Amen. We have some faith millionaires here. Amen. We got some faith billionaires here. Amen. We got some faith trillionaires here. Amen. Amen. That are able to pull the supernatural down Amen. from heaven and bring it into a three-dimensional world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. You see, some of you will never ever think that you are able to buy. I'm just using this natural type now to buy a house cash, but God can make it possible for you. Right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Three people are buying their house cash here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm living in God's economy. Amen. Did Abraham have to worry night and day when the Lord said, look north, south, east and west. I've given you the land. Look at the stars, amen. Look at the sand, amen. This will be your offspring. Did he have to worry? Did he have to go and try and help God make it, bring it to pass? No. Who made the promise of the word? Did Jesus say, if you continue in my word? If you ask in faith, are you continuing in his word? Amen. Then I tell you, ask abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. So God is going to answer in spite of the situation. Don't make a difference. Amen. Amram went back to work the next day because you know he was also a mud dauber. He was also making bricks. He went back the next day full of strength, full of life. And he began to tell his co-workers, Amen. Work with all your might. Amen. For our deliverance is coming soon. Amen. We'll give to Pharaoh what is Pharaoh's. And we'll give to God what is God's. Amen. The angel of the Lord met me last night and he told me the deliverer is coming. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, what happened when the baby was born? You know, time passes, the baby is born. They need to protect the baby. Amram, under inspiration, he takes these reeds and he starts to build an ark, a little basket full of reeds, and he begins to pitch it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm trying to show you that God's promises, you are part of God's promise for yes. this day. God will protect you. Yes. God will protect you through the Nile. Amen. God will protect you through stormy waters, Amen. through crocodile infested waters, yes, through a whirlpool. Amen. That may have been forming there in the waters. Amen. Nothing could touch the basket as long as Moses was in the basket. Amen. Amen. As long as your spirit is in this body, nothing can touch you if you are serving God's purpose. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. So God navigated that that uh, that basket through the Nile River. Amen. Through all the crocodiles. And he brought it down through a beautiful garden stream right into the palace of Pharaoh. They had a lovely water feature there. But God navigated it without GPS. Yes. God, the angels of the Lord. You know what the prophet, I don't have time to read it now. The prophet of God says that he dramatizes this and he says, God is looking through the banister of heaven and he's asking his angels, what are they doing down there? And the angels tell God, they are putting the baby in the water and God gets excited. And he says, you mean they trust me that much? Amen. Amen. They have faith in me that much that I'm able to take care of this baby. The one that I promised them. Amen. Amen. He said, send the 10,000 legion of angels oh, yeah. to protect that baby. Amen. Amen. Psalm 91 is here to protect you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I shall give my angels charge over thee. Yes, the angels are ministering spirits Amen. sent forth to the heirs of salvation. Yes. The angel of the Lord encamps around them that fear him. Amen. Hallelujah. All around you are angels. Amen. Even if you can't see it. Amen. The angels of God are there to protect you. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah, the, the angels of God protect this basket and they take it all the way to Pharaoh's courtyard. And there, amen, the sister of Pharaoh finds this basket. And the prophet of God says that this woman knew that her brother had passed a cruel law. So when she saw this baby, she knew, amen, that this baby must have been an uh, Hebrew baby. But she had compassion in her heart because she couldn't have her own children. And she said, I will take this baby and I will raise this baby up. You see what God will do? Amen. He will make an unbelieving king pay for your maintenance. Yes. Must buy your nappies. Yeah. Must buy your diapers. 
must buy your wet wipes, must buy your creams, must buy your purities. Moses grew up in luxury. Yeah. God will make the unbelievers take care of you. Yes, that's right. Right? God will make them take care of you right. and raise you up until you are ready to step out in your purpose. Yeah. The same one that Pharaoh raised was the same one that destroyed them yeah. because of him. Moses. Amen. Amen? So God is making them pay for his bills. And God even, if you read there further in that story, how God, now this woman, she didn't, you know, milk only comes to a woman who was conceived or had a child. So this woman, she couldn't have children, so she didn't have milk. So she asked Miriam, do you know anyone who can nurse this child? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Miriam said, I know just the woman. Yes. So God allows Joseph to come and the prophet says that the that Pharaoh's daughter, uh, sister said, I'm going to pay you yeah. Yeah. $300 <laughs> to nurse Moses. Yeah. Amen. And Miriam says, I know just the woman. Yeah. Amen. And she ran to tell her mother to come. Amen. And there in Pharaoh's yeah. kingdom, yes. Joseph had nursed Moses. Yes. And she got paid for nursing him. Yes. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Praise I hope my Lord. sisters don't get an idea now. They're nursing our babies here now. Yeah. For the Jeff with you and I in trouble here. Praise the Lord. $300 a week. Oh, I must read that carefully, whether it's a month or a week here. I don't want to trap myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But look at how God can preserve you for His purpose. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you can read that in teaching of Moses, how God is doing it. Amen. So we need to continue in the word to be able to face the current day crisis. I'm closing now. Amen. Let's stand together. Thank you. How do we continue in the current present day crisis? Continue in the word. Amen. Be faithful to the word. The word is our deliverer. Thank you. Amen. Let the musicians come forward. The same historical Jesus that cleansed the leper, healed the sick, raised the dead, is the same God. He says he is waiting anxiously for his people to call him on the scene. God is waiting anxiously for his people to call him on the scene. When when politics have failed, churches have failed. Amen. God will never fail. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many of you know he's not an historical God? Yes. Amen. Amen. When he said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, though that vision tarried, one day it was fulfilled in a little upper room with 120 people in it. They had to wait for that vision to be fulfilled. Amen. I want to read this. What good does a historical God do to us if he's only a historical God? What good would a historical God done Amram and Joseph? Had? What good would a historical God done to Moses? What good would a historical God done to Lazarus? What good would a historical done to ba blind Bartimaeus at the gate? And what would good would a historical God do to you tonight if he isn't the same today? He still forgives sins. He still heals all diseases. Amen. Call him out of history. Amen. Time is ending, church. Politics is ending. Life is ending. But when everything is coming to an end, Jesus is the light that we go to. Amen. When everything has made its doom, Jesus still shines. Because he's the lily of the valley. The bright and morning star. You believe that? Yes. Amen. And sorrow is my comfort. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the fairest of 10,000 of them all. Amen. God is willing to pour his blessing on you. 
God is willing to pour his power on you. Are you willing to receive it? Amen. You got that song? Jesus of the Saint. Let's sing it, amen. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning, remember, he's the author and finisher. It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. center of my life oh yes Jesus be the center of my life from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus for sing nothing else matters nothing else my 
your mouth and say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I thank you Lord for your word I thank you Lord that if I continue in your word oh God with patience oh God in faith oh God I shall Lord receive the promise oh God Father we know Lord you promised us in this day your body change oh God you promised us in this day Lord that the bride will be an invincible army Lord Jesus Lord you promised us Father that we will be an overcome of all things Lord we look forward to these promises Lord and Father these are the things we set before us oh Lord and we have joy in our hearts, O oh God, yes. to know, Father, that we have already overcome, O oh God. We are already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, O oh God. We are already blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ, O oh God. We thank
thank you, Father, that you are our Father, Lord. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, that you are Jehovah Rapha, you are Jehovah Shalom, you are Jehovah Nisi, O oh God, you are Jehovah Sitinu, O oh God, you are Jehovah Shalom, O oh God. Oh, we give you praise, O oh God. Give you glory, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Our God has provided all our needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. Not he will. He has already provided. The Lord has already provided all my needs. Amen. The Lord has already made provision for me. Amen. Hallelujah. In the midst of economic, amen, depression, in the midst of economic turmoil, the Lord is protecting you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you glory. Oh, yeah. Amen. You got a need. You want to raise your hand at this time. Amen. Let's remember the prayer request. Trusting and believing that the Lord is able to meet them at the point of the need. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank yes, you, Lord, for the Lord. angel of God who is here, oh, yes. Lord. Father, to perform the impossible, Father. Amen. And Lord, here to connect with the faith of the believers. Them that can believe that all things are possible. Yes. Father, you see the hands that are raised and you know the need beneath the hands, oh God. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will go forth, Lord, and meet them, Lord Jesus, and bring to pass, Lord, that which they desire in their heart, Father. And Lord, I pray, Lord, you will fulfill your promise in their life, oh God. Even, Lord, your spiritual promise of your word, oh God. Father, mold us and shape us and bring us into the stature of Jesus Christ, oh God. Until we all come into the image and the stature and the fullness of what you want us to be, Lord Jesus. And Father, may we be the very manifestation of the word you are on the earth, O oh God. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will help us, O oh Lord, to conform to your word. Help us to surrender to the word, O oh God. And Lord, even as you told the disciples, Lord, those that believed on you, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. Father, help us, O oh God. Father, sometimes it may, Lord, Father, Lord, we may lose patience, Father, but Lord, I pray, Lord, that we will continue in your word. Lord, the circumstance may weigh heavy on us, Lord Jesus. Father, the trial may be heavy on us, Lord, but I pray we will continue in your word, O oh God. Never wavering, Lord, but looking to the promise, looking to the end result, Lord. And this is the joy we have in our hearts, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, the joy is knowing the end result, Father. And we know the end result, Father. We know what you have done. We know what you have made us in Christ, O oh God. We love you. We appreciate you. I pray for every need, Lord. Every sick person, every person that desires, Lord, healing. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that your healing virtues will flow, God, and meet them at the point of need, Lord Jesus. Father, those that are in need, Father God, Father, Lord, to trust you and meet you in their homes, O oh God. Meet you in their finances, Lord. Meet you in their marriages, Father. Meet you in their schools, in their jobs, Father, wherever it be. I pray, Lord, you'll meet them, Father. I pray, Lord God, that you will, Lord, build us up, O oh God. And prepares for the hour that awaits us, Lord. Even as, Lord, we are waiting, Lord Jesus, to see the fulfillment of your promise. Keep us, Lord, faithful to your word. We ask in Jesus' name with much thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.